Hi, Andrew Kramer here with VideoCopilot.net, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use proxies inside of Adobe After Effects. Now, what is a proxy, you might ask? Well, a proxy is basically a lower resolution video, or still image, that is intended to temporarily take the place of a higher resolution piece of footage in your project. So, let me show you what I mean. I have this film out Cineon sequence provided by SMS Productions in Chicago, and it was shot with a JVC HD 100 HDV video camera, and then it was converted to film. Well, I just took a clip and converted it to a Cineon sequence so that I can demonstrate why this proxy business is important. As you can see, our composition is set to 50%, and this footage is huge. So at 100%, it's bigger than my screen here. So although I am working at a lower resolution to record this tutorial, but I digress. Now, in the composition settings, we can see that the footage is set to 1280 by 720. Now, high definition, uh, like HDTV, as you can see, is actually 1920 by 1080. But luckily, we're not at that point right now. So, that brings me to my next point, which is proxies. Now, sometimes we just lower the resolution of the project window and, you know, that, that works, right? Well, not exactly, because we're still sampling from this 1.4 gigabyte piece of footage, which, let me remind you, is only 17 seconds long. So that's a big file for a very short clip, but trust me, when you're working with high definition, uh, you need to work uncompressed. Anyway, for the purposes of this tutorial, we are just going to focus on this clip here, and what I want to do now is create a proxy for this piece of footage and remember a proxy is a lower resolution version of the same exact thing so to make a proxy I'm going to right click on my film out Cineon sequence but you can do this with your footage and such I'm gonna choose create proxy and I wanna make a movie and the render queue dialog pops up and you can see the render settings are set to draft and the output module is based on lossless with alpha. Now, we can go into the output module and this is basically the format in which the proxy is going to save itself. However, these settings may not be ideal for every situation. So, one setting I like to use is a QuickTime movie. So I go down to QuickTime and I change it from animation to photo JPEG and just make it a little over 90 so maybe 93 percent choose OK and uncheck audio unless you have audio I do not so I'm gonna hit OK and then I can hit render okay so now that my render is complete I can see that a square kinda of pops up right next to my piece of footage and now my icon is no longer a sequence it is a QuickTime file so let me go ahead and close the render queue for now and let's go ahead and take a look here so if I expand my project window I can select this film out and as you see we have the original source here so it's the film out Cineon sequence and it is this resolution and trillions of colors now our proxy is represented here called film out 3 and it is 640 by 360 and it's a photo JPEG QuickTime movie so if I toggle this switch on and off here, it switches between our full resolution clip and our proxy clip. So if we come over to the project window and set the resolution up to full, we can then zoom in to 100% and see what's happening here. So with the proxy turned on, this is what the clip looks like at 100%. Now, if I turn the proxy off, it'll then resample from the original file. So you can see that there's more detail compared to with the proxy on. Although, you have to admit, it's not too terrible with the proxy on. But watch how fast I can scrub through this clip, you know, without losing any quality. Now, the benefit of this is you'll be able to work faster and preview faster while you're working. Now, at any given time in your composition, you can then shut this proxy layer off and see what it's going to look like at full resolution. Now, you might be concerned, like, well, what if I have a bunch of clips and I need to do this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and re-import this sequence and choose Open. And I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times. So, say you have a project window with several pieces of footage. And you say, well, now I want to, you know, I want to convert all of these pieces of footage. So, I'm just going to rename these here. Well, 
you can't unfortunately select them all and choose create proxy. That would be too easy. Although you can add them all to the render queue and then set them as proxies. So if you already have pre-rendered out stuff, you can right click on your footage and say set proxy and choose a file. And in this case, we could actually do that because we've already rendered a proxy out for this clip and they happen to be the same. But obviously, why would you do that? However, we can just create proxy movie, create, right click on the next one, create proxy movie, right click on the next one, create proxy movie. And now you can see all of these files have been added to the render queue and I can now render them out and uh, you know go take a quick break. Well, what if I want to use a slightly different output setting? So if I go in here, it's set to video for Windows. So I'm going to have to go in here and change it to QuickTime, hit OK, go down to this one, change it to QuickTime, right? Well, there's actually a faster way to do it. If we click on this output module arrow here and we click Make Template, we can call this uh, Super Proxy and we can go and edit it. We call it QuickTime and no audio and we choose OK and we hit OK and now if we select the output module hold down shift and select say if there was a bunch of these here hold hold down shift and we could select all of these render queue items by just selecting their output module then using this little arrow we can choose the super proxy setting and it will automatically apply itself to all of these so very handy very cool but it gets better. Let's go ahead and just delete all these out of here for now. If I go to the edit temps and choose the output module setting here, I can then make some global changes to what comes up when I create a proxy. So what do I mean? I'll show you. Movie proxy default is set to lossless with alpha. Well, if I change this to my super proxy, hit OK. Now when I add my footage to create proxy, it is automatically going to be using that super proxy setting. Now, likewise, if we go back into the template output module, we can also change the movie default. So say I, you know, say I always use QuickTime. Well, I can make a new settings here. Go to QuickTime. It's already set to the photo JPEG. And maybe I want the audio and I choose OK. And then I change my movie default to this untitled one. Actually, let's go ahead and name that uh, Quick time uh, you know JPEG and so it automatically sets it to the movie default I choose OK now if I'm in my project here I can choose composition add to render queue and it automatically uses that setting so you're not always going in and changing your setting every time you add something to the render queue see these are time-saving tips oh another one I didn't learn this for a while it's awesome you ever have a render that dies or doesn't finish or something weird well you can uh, go back into the project, you know, add to render queue, reset the settings, or just select the name, hit Control D, duplicate, or Apple D, or whatever, and it'll duplicate it and reactivate it. So this proxy one here at the top, I've already rendered it out. Well, if I select it, Control D, bam, it's ready to go again. Sometimes you might have to go in there and uh, reset the start and uh, end duration, uh, you know, whatever. Now, let's go ahead and close these out. So, anyway, you get the idea. Now, there's a couple side effects slash limitations slash things you should think about. So, if you're working with a proxy that's half the resolution of its original file, you want to work at half resolution. Since you're not going to be seeing extra pixels, you might as well not render the extra pixels. So, let's go ahead and turn the proxy back on for the quick time. Now, look at this thing blazing fast. And if you'll notice, I'm using adaptive resolution Generally, when you're working at such high-resolution HD images and compositing, the OpenGL can be a little overwhelmed. Now, there's a couple little things I want to point out also, and that is when you're working with proxies, you don't want to do motion tracking on the proxy. So if I select this clip, choose, actually go to my workspace, motion tracking, it's not going to be good if I try tracking a point because it's going to track this clip here. So I want to go ahead and change it off and then do my motion tracking and all would be well. Watch here. I just analyze forward here. Okay. Well, here's a slight problem and that is 
my composition is set back to full resolution. And the reason why is After Effects changes your composition to full resolution while it's tracking, obviously, so that it has its higher resolution source. But the problem is you're supposed to be working at half resolution when you're using your proxies, and now you're going to be like, gosh, why is it so slow now? And that's because After Effects took the liberty of changing your resolution settings. So watch After Effects. Then also you want to make sure you're careful about your time controls, and you want to use half resolution there or automatic, which will read the composition setting. Now, when you render out your final video, you don't want to use the proxies. You want to use the high-resolution, full-resolution clip. Likewise, while you're compositing, you may want to, you know, toggle between, you know, full resolution and the proxy just to make sure that, you know, certain frames are right on and, uh, you know, edges or whatever match up. So when you're rendering it out, add to render queue. You'll notice in the render settings, proxy use is set to use no proxies. And I believe that's by default. So that's generally what you want to do because proxies are lower resolution and you don't want to do that. So anyway, this type of a setup is certainly ideal for doing color correction, compositing, and pretty much anything you would do in After Effects when you're working at this resolution. All right, well, thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Kramer with videocopilot.net. Check us out. Thank <laughs> you.